Alright, g'day. So, we're going to talk about a strange thing today. This isn't the usual kind of tutorial video I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to explain to you um, kind of my take on this nice little thing called a shepherd's tone. Um, it's an audio illusion. Um, I found out about it uh, about a year ago and just browsing around Wikipedia. Um, and it's, I think it's a really interesting concept. It's a really outside the way of approaching audio and, and, and thinking about how audio works. Um, the best way to describe it is uh, I like to give the example of, of this little picture here, which you're probably familiar with. Um, uh, MC Escher kind of made it made it famous. It's this never-ending staircase that you know goes up and up and up and up or down and down, depending on on how you look at it. Um, and and the shepherd's tone is is, is kind of a an audio representation of this. Um, so if you can imagine a, a tone or a collection of tones that are constantly rising or ascending or descending, um, but they never actually get anywhere. Um, and it's quite peculiar. It's a bit of a disorienting sound to listen to. And it's it's also, well, I mean, it's interesting because, I mean, you know, I'm a geek and I imagine y you are as well if you're having a <laughs> listen to this. Um, you know, for for a frequency to rise, for the you know number of hertz to go on up and up and up, it kind of has to go somewhere. It has to get to a point where it uh, becomes inaudible. I guess for the end of the human cochlear, it can't pick up the frequencies anymore. But it doesn't. It just keeps going up and up and up. It kind of kind of stays in the same place, but gives the impression of of rising and rising and rising, or falling and falling, depending on how you want to make it. Um, so I think this is a really interesting thing, and. Um, I think it's kind of the tip of the iceberg as far as what, what can actually be done as far as tricking the human brain into hearing strange shit goes. Um, so it kind of works like this. So it plays on the whole octave buzz. So let's say you've got a note which is a particular frequency, say 440 hertz or a note which is your standard A. And if you double that, so if you double the frequency you get an octave above or if you like it's the exact same note. It's just higher, it's pitched up or it's pitched down. So you take an A, 440, you double the hertz to 880 and you get another A, but it's higher, it's the same note. Um, and if you go in the other direction you take A and you divide it uh, by 2, then you get 220, which is another A, which is just down below. And um, these these notes are harmoniously perfect. I believe an octave is called a perfect eighth because it's perfect, it sounds great. Uh, I think you'd struggle to find somebody who would disagree that an octave is one of the most purest, harmonious kind of two tones that you can get. Uh, I guess maybe in the Western scale, I'm not too sure about other ones. But um, yeah, so and, and I think that's a particularly interesting thing because, I mean, it's 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 a simple multiplication times two or a division by a two, and you get the most perfect sounding thing. It's the whole simplicity is the key thing. Um, so the the shepherd's tone is is is, is a play on these. You take a bunch of these uh, notes at different octaves, and uh, you play them together, and you slide them. And what happens is they all kind of talk to each other and meet up with each other and kind of go around in circles and chase each other's tails if you like, like yeah it's one dog chasing his tail, imagine four dogs chasing their tail um, so of maybe it would be four dogs in a circle and each one's chasing each other's tail and uh, it gets a bit more complicated than that um, anyway so well, we'll just start by making one, I'm going to make one here in Ableton Live for you um, I'm going to do it in my way, it's kind of a shortened way of doing it um, it's a bit difficult to do in a sequence uh, without having very precise numbers and maths to work with um, but we can get the whole idea and the concept going here and get something which sounds a lot like it so I've got just a standard Ableton blank canvas open and what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in an operator into this first MIDI channel so I'm going to use the operator here just because it's a nice uh, native plugin to uh, Ableton um, and I'm going to insert a MIDI clip so we're going to give this operator something to do and let's pick an A so I'm going to double click here, pick an A and I'm going to drag it down to the end so now we've got a big nice long A which is 8 bars long uh, and in theory we should have by default a sine wave playing so let's just listen to that oh, the volume's on infinity there we go, so we've got a nice pure tone A um, load up a little spectrum just so we can see that so you can see this A is at 220 Hertz cool so that's all good um, 
what we want to do is we want to create four of these um, and we want to separate them all octaves apart so what I'm going to do is select this operator track and push Control D to duplicate it and then I'm going to open up this clip and I'm going to pick this A and I'm going to push up 12 times so it goes up an octave because an octave is 12 semitones and a semitone is each one of these little notes here so if I click on that A and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 we now play two A's octaves apart Great, so it's not sounding like a shepherd's stone yet, we haven't got any sliding going on and we haven't really done much to it. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to backtrack and delete this duplicate copy because we don't, what we want to do is we want to put the automation of the pitch into this single first track and then we want to duplicate it. I'm going to duplicate it about, let's say three times so we've got four copies of it. You can do it about five, six, seven, eight times if you want. Um, I'm just going to use four because we're just working with the concept today and it'll still work and give us an impression but I want to get the pitch shifting and all the automation sorted before I duplicate it because we want all the duplicate copies to um, do exactly the same thing as the original. Um, so I'm going to delete this two operator and I'm going to open up this one here that's all good. I want this to pitch up now. So I want this continuous note to go from uh, 220 all the way up to 440 hertz over the period of uh, the eight bars. So if we go in down here and click on the envelopes box um, and click on the pitch bend, you see we've got our nice little pitch bend uh, automation line here. So I'm going to create a point at the start, which is zero. Then I'm going to create another point and drag it right up to the top. So now when I play this, it's going to bend the note from the original value upwards. But the problem is, I believe by default, operator has the pitch bend range set to 5. So we want that at on 12, because remember 12 semitones is a perfect octave. So now if I play this, it should... Uh, I'll just get rid of that spectrum, I don't need it. Make sure your loop point's set up here. I'm just going to slow this down a bit because it's a bit fast. We'll make it 100. So we've got the sine wave going up, and then when it reaches the end, 440 hertz, boom, snaps back to 220. Okay, that's all good. That's what we want to duplicate, so let's do that now. So I'm going to select this operator 1, and I'm going to duplicate it. So now we've got an exact copy, and you see it's also copied the clip, and it's also copied the pitch bend automation of the clip, exactly the same as the original. That's what we want. Um, I'm just going to name this here, let's say 220 to 440 hertz, just so we know what's going on. Um, and this one here, this clip here, we want this to be, let's say, 110 to 220. Remember, 110 is uh, 220 divided by 2, which is exactly an octave lower. So if we open this up, click on the notes, and then click on the note, the A, and if we push down 12 times, and again, quick way to get it an octave lower, boom, there we go. So now we have uh, this, which is 110 to 220. So this is going to shift up, and then this is going to shift up. So we play these together. We've got two octaves apart, both sliding up together perfectly in unison. And let's see what happens when they loop this time. definitely quite clearly a gap there um, that's because if you can kind of picture the the, the pitch bending line here we've got uh, this 220 going up to 440 and then it'll snap back so it'll go straight from 440 to 220 there's a jump there however this one goes from 110 to 220 so this pitch bends up to 220 and when it snaps back this 220 here links up with this 220 here so this finishes on 220 this starts on 220 so there's a seamless transition between the end of this and the start of this however this has this starts at 110 and there's nothing to pick up that 110 so we're going to get a gap here and here which is not what we want um, so what we'll do is we're going to, I'm going to duplicate this uh, two more times so we have four and then we can start working on changing it so we don't get that gap so I'm going to duplicate this top one here Control D so if we look up here, this is, well, this was the original, but let's just keep this one here and change this one. We want this one to be, uh, which should we change this to, 440 to 880. So we want this clip to be exactly one octave higher than the one below it. So again, click it. We're going to push up 12 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 